Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm going to teach you how to do an API call in Python. So why do we want to do an API call? Well, let's just have a look at our data set first. This is the data set we will be using for phase one. Um, it's a typical housing data set. Okay, so I got a property address, number of bedrooms of the address, number of bathrooms, land area, and the C fee valuation of the property. So we want to do some modeling on this, but we also want to add more attributes first. And one of the attributes that we want to add on is uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, and once we got the latitude and longitude, that would enable us to get even more attributes. So uh, here API can help us. Uh, if we call an API and send them uh, our addresses and the API can return us the latitude and longitude information for each address. So first, I guess, let's just uh, go for the packages that we need. Okay, we need JSON. That's because most APIs, uh, we prefer the information to be returned to us in JSON format. So we need to be able to interpret that. And this is where this library comes in handy. We need uh, pandas. We also need requests. So pandas is a data manipulation library. Uh, we will use that a bit later. But requests is the main library used to do the API call. It sends a request to the API and the API gives us the information we want. So these are some of the first steps uh, of, actually this is always the first step uh, when we do an API call. We want to find a URL uh, because we need to access, you know, gain access to make a request to the API, right? And where do we do that? Well, we will do that through the URL. So the API which we are using is called location IQ. So the first thing you do is always get URL from documentation, okay, when we do an API call. So here we're going to look at the documentation. We want a geocoding documentation because that we're trying to geocode. We're giving it an address and it's giving us a latitude and longitude. That's geocoding. So well, we will click on that. And this is the URL that we want. So we copy that and then we paste it here. Now you notice that I copied everything up till the question mark because everything after the question mark, they are basically parameters which we include when we send our request and we define these parameters a bit later. But in terms of the URL, this is what we need. Everything before the question mark. So that's our URL. And now we're going to define the parameters that we need. And we define it like this. It's like a dictionary. And then, uh, oh, I guess here's the second step, right? Look at the required parameters. And where do we find that? It's always in the documentation as well. So if we just scroll down a little bit, uh, there we go. So these are the required parameters. Uh, so the API key is a required parameter. So in order to use the surface, this API surface, which location IQ offers, we need an API key and we get it once we sign in. Uh, don't worry about this because for phase one of the assignments, I will give you guys an API that you can call. You do need to sign up, but it's completely free. But anyway, once you sign up to the service, they give you a key. And this, so we need to define the key, right? Because it's, one of, it's a required parameter, so we need to define it. So the key, so it's a dictionary, so it's like a key value pair, right? Uh, okay, so this might not make any sense to you, but that's because the key I have uh, stored in this Python file here and I import key. So uh, when you are doing it, you probably type in the key here as a string, but because I don't want any of you or well anyone to see it and you know use it, 
I, I do this. What is the other parameter which we need other than key? Well, it's basically Q. And Q is basically a free form query string. So in order to for the API to give us a latitude and longitude, we need to give it an address, right? Otherwise, it doesn't know what latitude or longitude to give back to us. So we need to define Q. Notice that everything here, key and Q, is exactly the same as this. Uh, it's compulsory that they're exactly the same. The spelling is the same. Thank you. So just for testing purposes, we'll just say 30 May Road, Auckland. Okay, so that will be our query which we send to the API. And lastly, uh, we it says okay. Lastly, we what we need to define what format uh, the data is in when they send back to us. So you uh, in this case, we will want it to be in JSON format. And then so we have a look. So we have an optional parameter with format, and we can define this as JSON or XML or XML whatever. Uh, it defaults to XML, so since we want JSON, we need to set this parameter. Oops. So these are the three parameters which we want to set. The first two is required, is compulsory. The third one is optional, but um, you, uh, I mean, I want it to be returned to me in JSON format so that I can uh, well, interpret it and use the information so I set it as JSON. It's not compulsory, but it defaults to XML and we don't want that. Okay, so once we got the URL and then we got the parameters, then we can just call the API. Oh, I need to run um, that cell first. Um, okay, so request.get, we're just sending a request to the API. The API is located in this URL here, which is the one that we defined before. And this get function have an argument called params. And we pass, well, it basically means parameter, right? So we're passing into this argument this params here, which we defined earlier as well. So we just run that. And then if we look at response.status code, it shows us 200. And 200 is good. When it shows anything else, then we really need to investigate why it's showing something else, because if status code is not 200, it's usually an error. So, okay, so how do we actually get the latitude and longitude? Well, we simply do this. So the response is sent back to us as JSON, because that's what we requested it to be sent back to us as. Uh, so we just call the JSON, uh, we use the JSON library, and we see the information we want. I mean, there's heaps of information here, but we can extract whatever we want, right? But the ones we are interested in is latitude, and longitude. Uh, notice that there's a square bracket here and there's a curly brace here. So this is basically a Python list and inside a Python list is a Python dictionary. So if we do this, it selects the first element of the list. Yeah, okay, there we go. And if we do this, it selects the latitude. I mean, we're just treating it like a dictionary, right? There we go and that will give us the longitude. So here we can basically say, actually, let's put it here. We can now just say latitude equals to this thing here, and longitude equals to this thing there. So that's, uh, you know, one of the major steps, right? We kind of already have something. We can even just make it into a function right now. But actually, yeah, let's just make it into a function right now. 
We're getting the let long. And we have an input as an address. And we put the address here. Remember, Q is the query as the address. So that's why I'm putting it there. And then we return let long. So let's try this out. Okay, so if we just uh, run it, and then we go. So this is my favorite address, so let's just do it again just to test it out. Okay, so it works as expected. And um, if we want to try something else, okay, and it works as expected as well. So now, um, it looks complete, but there's still something more which we need to do. And that's because sometimes when you go over the data frame here, you might find addresses which the API doesn't recognize. So if there's, and plus we can't guarantee the data is really clean, right? So if there's an address that looks like that, then we will get a key error. And how do we, you know, catch this error? Because we want to ideally apply this function over the whole data set, and we don't want it to stop all of a sudden with some key errors. We don't. That's that's not what we want. So we will catch it by using the status code. So if there's any error, status code would not equal to two hundred. So we go if response dot status code does not equals to two hundred. Then we return, uh, well, let's just say we return the response.status code. Okay, so do that. And then we run this again. Uh, we're putting in a fantastical address here, right? And we get the error code, which is 404. And if we look here, 404 means no location or places were found, no style. It just means it's not able to geocode it. So that will catch any possible errors. And when we do apply the function over the data frame later on, even if there's massive misspelling or you know errors here, uh, it won't break. Now, what if it's none? Because sometimes the data set is missing data, right? So if it's none, it's to return this pointer. So that's good. Uh, it didn't give us a key error. It didn't have any exception. This is what we want. And again, let's just try one more address, right? So uh, maybe this is around my area. So let's give that a try. Okay, so that works fine. Okay, so that's it for this part. We made a function which uh, takes that address as an input and returns the latitude and longitude. And if there's any messy data or something which the API doesn't recognize, it doesn't break, and it will return the response status code. Um, this, oh, I mean, ideally you would try to, you know, put this function into a separate Python file and, you know, kind of wrap it up instead of just running it in a notebook like this. But uh, well, for the assignment, I think it's fine. And usually, I mean, it's good practice to just um, have a doc string here saying uh, takes an address as an input, returns latitude and Okay. Uh, right, so where we left off last is we have a function which takes in an address as an input and spits out a latitude and a longitude coordinate uh, after calling the API. Uh, so now we want to find out how to uh, basically call, use, apply this function over every property in our CSV file. Okay. So how we do that? First, we read in the CSV file into a pandas data frame first. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Oops. 
So that this read CSP function is uh, a pandas function, okay? Well, and obviously it reads in the CSP and it reads it into this data frame object here. Right, so once we have our uh, CSV file read into the a data frame object, we can just have a quick look. We'll just have a look, right, to see what it looks like. Um, okay, so, well, the, this is the completed data frame, right? It already has the latitude and longitude and also a more, um, uh, uh, some information about the area this address lies in. But what I'm trying to show you right now is how to add in the latitude and longitude in. So I just drop those columns first, cause um, and then we will add them back on, and I will show you how to add them on. So just give me a second. Right, so let's just drop those columns first. Okay, so this is what our CSV looks like right now, and we want to add a latitude and longitude column on. And how do we do that? Well, we need to apply this function uh, to every address, and then create two new columns. And before we do that, we need to change our function a little bit first. Uh, if we want our new two new columns to be called latitude and longitude, then we need to make some changes in our function to return uh, something which the pandas data frame can use. So this is a pandas data frame, and a pandas series is basically a single column of the data frame. So if we look here, if we select the address column, we see that it's a pandas series. So, uh, and well, why do I need to show you that? Because we need to transform this stuff here into a pandas series, and then we can apply the function to every property, and then create two new columns within the data frame. So, okay, so let's make, them, so let's make our output into a pandas series. It's very straightforward, okay? We just called pandas.series and this is the part which you might need to pay a little bit of attention okay so panda series wrap a bracket around you know the two outputs but we also have this dictionary thing here right so what this dictionary thing here is, it basically means that there's a column called latitude and the value of the column is latitude and there's a column called longitude and there's a value which and that's the longitude and uh, it, as you'll see later, this if we uh, return an output like this, uh, we can apply this function to the whole data frame. Uh, but that's but then we need to change one more thing because if response dot status code does not equals two hundred, then we also need to return a pandas series. So if we just wrap this around with uh, do the same thing, you know, wrap it around with the pandas series, and then again we do need to do this. Okay, so if the status code, you know, there is an error, then for latitude, instead of returning the actual latitude value, it would return the error code. And then we just need to run this. Okay, and then we can try, well, let's just try it with, uh, you know, an example first. So let's go back to my favorite address, all right? <laughs> Okay, so as you see, what is returned now is not just the coordinates. The coordinates have a title attached to them. The title is latitude and longitude. Okay, now that we got that sorted, this function is ready to be applied to the whole data frame. 
So let's have a look at the data frame. Yep, there it is. So how do we create two new columns uh, called latitude and longitude? It's uh, fairly straightforward. I mean, there's really no magic here, right? I mean, just if you just have a look and then you will understand. So BF, that's the data frame. And then we have two brackets. And then inside the brackets, we have the columns that we want to create. We want to create a column called latitude and a column called longitude, okay? And then, okay, and then, and then we need to do something to create it, right? We need to apply this function, right? So how do we do that? So we uh, need to apply it to this column here, to the address. Uh, this function only takes in an address as an input. So, you know, we don't really care about this, that, and anything else. So we need to select the address first. And how we select a column? Okay, well, maybe I should start off with that first. We can select a column of the data frame by having a full stop there. Or we can have a square bracket and type in the column name there. So that gives the same stuff. So, but in this case, I chose to use the full stop. It doesn't really matter too much. So we're uh, we're indicating that we're selecting the address column, and then we're applying the function. And what are we applying this function to it? So that's why there's apply here because we're applying the function. And then inside we need to put the function name, uh, which is this thing here. And then if we run enter, actually, hold on, it's usually good before we run it across the whole thing to um, test it on a couple of columns first. So if I make a sample here, equals to here. Okay, so this means I'm selecting the first five rows of the data frame and attributing it to this object here called sample. So sample is basically this, it's the first five rows, one, two, three, four, five. And then I want, okay, so if you want to have a look, this is what sample is, it's the same thing, okay? So if we want to add two columns here, latitude and longitude, and as I already explained before, we want to add these two columns and we're going to apply this function to the address column, okay? So we can see what happens now. Okay, so if we just have a look at what, what actually happened. Okay, so we can see that the, the function worked for the first three rows, but then we get a 429 error for the fourth and fifth row. And what 429 is obviously not the latitude and longitude, it's the error response code. Uh, yep, it's the response status code. So that's showing that there's been some form of an error. So we just look back at location IQ documentation. And then we look at the errors. And we've got a 429. Oh. And, then, and then we find out that the request exceeded the per second rate limits and so on and so forth. So we need to slow down our API calls a little bit so that it doesn't exceed whatever limit they are putting it on us. So to do that, I guess we have to do import time. And then just do that. I think 0 0.2 seconds fine. So what this is, it basically means that Every time this function is called, we wait 0 0.2 seconds before executing anything. So if I run this again, which I just did, and then I uh, and then I just run it again. And then now that we would see that there is no longer any error codes of any sort uh, so it ran successfully. Um, so now that that ran, you know, without any problems, we can run it on the whole data frame. Uh, because right now we're only running on the sample, right? 
So we just get rid of all the sample because they are really just to test out and it's very really important to test it out first because otherwise you just let it run for you know some time and then all of a sudden it breaks. It's quite frustrating. So now you can just do this. Uh, so what are we doing again? Yes, we're adding the two columns. So same stuff, same deal here, right? We're applying this function. I never understand what the name is. Okay, so we're applying this function and then we just let it run. And then if we just run this line, it will populate two columns, the latitude and longitude columns with the respective latitude and longitude of each address. So one thing that's important is when you write this function, this uh, the, the, the spelling here or the, the column title here must be exactly the same as that one there. And this one must be exactly the same as that one there. If there's any difference, then you will you know, uh, get an error. Um, but now, because they're exactly the same, it's fine. So, and, and by the way, the API call does take some time. So I've just shown you how to um, use an API to uh, populate two new columns and, you know, in, in, in building up the data set. And in the assignments, you will actually need to call an API as well. But it's, you know, it's very straightforward, right? Just do exactly what I did here. Um, and and just do exactly what I did here, but the API would be a different one. We are not going to use location IQ anymore. It'd be a different API, but it's very very straightforward. And you will be populating uh, some other columns and uh, continue to build up the data set. Mm -hmm. Hi, there is one last thing which I need to cover and which is quite useful, uh, actually really useful. Uh, and which you need for the phase one assignment. So, okay, so previously, we, if we want to apply a function, then we basically did this, uh, where the address was the input. But what if the function takes in two columns as an input? Uh, then we, and how do we select two columns? Uh, I would guess I will show you how to do that. So let's just make a function here that um, that takes in two columns as an input or two values as an input. So for example, uh, if I just make a function here, uh, example, okay, combine and then return. So, okay, so what this function does is it takes in two inputs, a latitude input and a longitude input, and then it returns a tuple that contains the latitude and longitude. So we just run that. And say we want to create a new column in the data frame called combined coordinates. Uh, So we're so again it's kind of similar to that one, but in this case there is no double brackets because we are only creating one new column. If we're creating two, I mean two or more, then we do need the double brackets there. So in this case we're only going to have one new column. What we're going to do is uh, apply this function here uh, over every row but we want to get as input to this function uh, the values in the column latitude and the values in the column longitude. So now how we do this is it'll, it might look quite confusing, but it won't be hard. I mean, I will explain to you. Oops. Okay, so uh, of course that looks confusing right now, right? But 
this one line of code, if you kind of just learn it, you can use it on many and many, many different ways. So we apply, again, we see this apply thing, which is the same as what we did before. Uh, apply means we're applying a function over the whole data frame. But instead of uh, you know choosing the column, we, we didn't specify any column, but that's because there's more than one column that we need to uh, that we need as input. So lambda x that that basically so lambda x is actually uh, what what this means is I think I I'm, I'll just change it to this because it'll become more straightforward if I do that. So if we set lambda as row. Then uh, each, then we're basically passing in each row into the function, right? So, uh, so this is the function which we want to apply. We're passing each row into the function. So the first, this value here would be the latitude value of this of row number. Well, imagine if we're iterating through the whole data frame, the first iteration. We pass in row number one and the latitude of row number one into this function here. And then for row number one, we're passing in the longitude for lo uh, row, <laughs> row number one into, again, this function here. And then axis equals one, we do need to include it because that means we're looking at it row-wise. We're passing in one row at a time. If it's x is equal to zero, then it's a different story completely because that means we are passing in one column at a time. So, so what this thing does is basically we look at it one row at a time. For each row, we uh, put in the latitude value and the longitude value into this function here. And if you just see what it does. Hold on. So right, 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 right. Okay, so so actually, I, I I'm actually I, I'm using a sample because that's much faster and it gets the point across. Cause the actual data frame has uh, a thousand um, rows. So we just so that's why there's an error because I was using DF and I haven't built the latitude and longitude columns for the DF yet. So we just do this again. Then we see that it worked, right? Because this is what we expected. We want to create one new column called combined coordinates. And what combined coordinates is, is basically this function here, right? It takes in the latitude and longitude and combine it into a tuple. So it takes in the latitude, which is that one, longitude and combines it into a tuple. And that's basically this lambda function is actually very, very useful, and you can use it in many, many ways. You can create whatever function you want here and just apply it to the data frame and type exactly the same thing, lambda row, and then you type in the function name here and you type in the you know row and column name of whatever values you want to plug into the function. Don't forget x is equals one and then you will get your new column created for you. So this would be the last piece of information you need. It's very useful, this lambda function. And that's all for me, uh, from me for this part of the tutorial. And hope I will see you guys next time.